Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about what to eat before or after exercise or do you have to eat before and after exercise, right? That questions also come up frequently in my diabetes practice. I'm an endocrinologist by trade and I love treating patients with diabetes and I'm hopeful that this video will teach you something. Now, let's go back to what type of diabetes you have. So if you are on agents that does not cause low blood sugar, let's say you're on metformin only, or you're on metformin and ozempic, or metformin and trulicity, metformin and jardines, the agents that does not cause low blood sugar is generally okay, and you don't have to worry too much about exercise. The only time you really need to worry about exercise causing low blood sugars is when you are on an agent such as a sulfonylurea, glipizide, glyburide, glimepiride. Any of these agents can cause low blood sugar either during or after exercise. Now remember, anytime you exercise, your blood sugar may drop during the exercise, especially if it is a prolonged exercise or a longer exercise, or it can drop within the next 24 hours. And that is because anytime you exercise, the effect can last up to 24 hours. And many people do not realize that. So they go exercise in the morning and later, 10 hours later, they may have a low blood sugar because they took what they normally take with the insulin, uh, and the same insulin works much better on the days that you exercise. So you have to pay attention to that part. And uh, what to do immediately, uh, right before the exercise, depends on how much insulin you took before, how long before you took it, um, and what your blood sugars at, at, at the time at, at right now. So there's a lot of questions to be answered. So if you're in a continuous glucose monitoring system such as Dexcom, Freestyle, Libre, or whatever it may be, uh, and if you know how to manage those devices, uh, like you need to understand how the arrows work, up arrow, down arrow, uh, diagonal arrow, um, and you know, there are a lot of uh, factors that play into decision making and it may not be very easy at all times. So if you're not very sure, you may wanna ask the someone, but that someone is not available to you always, is it? No, it's not. So that's why we came up with actually sugarmds.com. So you have the app and you can even text from your cell phone uh, and ask a question uh, what to do at this time and we will assess your situation and give you an immediate answer to prevent a problem and that will also uh, be a, a, tr a training for you so in a similar scenario you will know what to do but if you don't have a trainer if you don't have a professional helping you side by side uh, at all times during your life and during different events during sickness during exercise uh, when you're in a party etc etc uh, a lot of things changes your blood sugar and can give you unexpected results uh, so your blood sugar may be perfectly okay one day and very high next day and to avoid these scenarios you really need to be able to tweak your regimen and understand how medications work how your body reacts Anyway, so the the uh, so I will give you a quick example. Let's say you your uh, this is going to be a simple example. Let's say your blood sugar is 110, and you are on once a day insulin. Uh, so if you are going to go to the gym for an hour, it's not a bad idea to consume a, a rapidly uh, absorbed carb. Now that's not necessarily, you know, I'm not asking you to go eat dessert, but you can have a, a banana or something like that that has 30 to 40 grams of carbs that can carry you through the exercise uh, if you are worried about, and, and as I said, you're only worried about low blood sugars during or after exercise if you're on sulfonylurea agents or if you're on insulin. If you have taken insulin, let's say two hours ago, a short-acting insulin in this case, you know that the short-acting insulins, or you should know that the short-acting insulins actually last up to four hours. So we call that active insulin time. So if I took insulin, a short-acting insulin, two hours ago, I have or I will have insulin two more hours in my system. And if my blood sugars are already trending low or less than uh, 120, 130, 
and I know it's gonna go down further because I have insulin in my system. So in that case, I would eat snacks uh, before my exercise. And during the exercise, if I am exercising more than 30 minutes, I should stop and check my blood sugar and see where I am. Um, and then once you do that a few times, and if your exercise pattern is similar, then you will understand how your body is reacting. So checking more often is definitely helpful. And then uh, after you uh, exercise, if you're starting the new exercise regimen, it is not a bad idea actually to keep an eye on your blood sugars every two to three hours for the next uh, 18 to 24 hours just to see how your blood sugars are trending. Uh, just because if you are keeping the same diet regimen, and especially if you're trying to lose weight, uh, you may end up having low blood sugars unless you make adjustments in your insulin or other medication regimens. Again, uh, we don't expect you to make very correct decisions um, uh, with your medications, with diabetes and so many factors contributing to it. Um, again, ask your uh, doctor if they're available. And if you're one of our patients, you know you're going to hear back from us within uh, seconds or minutes after your text or your call. Um, now, with that uh, being said, uh, if your blood sugars are, let's say, 200, then you may not have to worry too much about it. Uh, you can just go exercise and, and then see what happens maybe two hours later. But I wouldn't be too worried unless you're going to a marathon and you're going to be exercising very intense, intensely, then, then you may want to monitor more often. But if you're going to go on a treadmill, your blood sugar is 200, you don't have uh, insulin in your system uh, that was recently taken, then you don't have to worry too much about that. Now, sometimes you will also notice that your blood sugars are actually going higher when you're exercising and that's not uncommon so what happens when you exercise your body creates this adrenaline discharge it is a stress response a temporary stress and adrenaline goes up to try to uh, come up with this necessary blood flow uh, through your heart so your blood sugar, since adrenaline is a hormone that goes against the insulin for temporarily your blood sugar may go up a little bit higher but that's not going to last too long immediately after exercise your adrenaline goes down and then you become insulin sensitive and your blood sugar may go totally opposite direction so again understanding your body how you're responding check your blood sugar before if it is on the low side eat a snack check it again in the middle of the exercise if it is more than 30 minutes and then you can continue to monitor after the exercise is done every two to four hours. And if, if, if you know how your body is reacting and if you know your routine, you may not have to do that every time you exercise, uh, but at least initially uh, to determine how you're reacting to the exercise, it is not a bad idea. Again, continuous glucose monitoring systems make the life a lot easier. Uh, at sugarmds.com, we're always there for you to answer your questions. And with that, we are going to conclude and we'll see you next time. So if you have any questions, ask for a free consultation from sugarmds.com.